Hi everyone, this is Grand Stratagem here, and today I'm doing a kinship video on the topic of mods, specifically the mods that I use, because I know I was asked that question a lot in the previous video that I did a day or two ago, so I figured I'd just go ahead and make a new video, and we're gonna go through each single mod that I use, explain why I use it, and you know, if you're someone who's also playing Kenshi on Steam, you might be uh, inspired to go and use some of these mods yourself. And we'll talk a, bit, a little bit about, you know, compatibility issues and difficulty and what they add to the game, etc, etc. So let's get right into it, shall we? So we've got the portable Mark II turrets mod in the beginning here. Um, this essentially gives you the access to create and buy those tripod turrets that you see in the game in certain bases. Um, I felt like, you know, if you're playing in a certain campaign and you've gotten to the point where you have a bustling industry and you can send out expeditions of 20, 30 guys, no problem, it makes sense to me that they'd be able to lug along portable turrets if they're setting up like a siege to a certain area or anything like that. So yeah, this just adds a bit more flavor. Does it make the game more easy? Yeah, for sure. But um, it's just a neat little thing to have that I felt like maybe should have been in the base game. Who knows? Uh, so Faction Caravans is our next one here. This gives the, uh, you know, it just adds a bit more flavor to the actual major factions. It gives them caravans that you can meet out in the world. Uh, these caravans, at least in my experience, don't have any cats on them. So it's not like you have, you know, little repositories where you can just dump all your gear to. But uh, you can buy food and, you know, medical supplies, that sort of thing. And, um, yeah, I mean... I feel like if you're doing a bandit playthrough, for instance, you're very limited on the amount of targets that you can attack, and most of your targets are going to be military patrols that don't have anything other than loot. Um, I thought it was a little odd that you can't like raid a caravan to get food and, and like medical supplies and, and stuff of that nature. Uh, so yeah, this adds that into this game, and I don't know, just adds a bit more uh, life to the world. I know some people don't like that uh, when, in their versions of Kenshi, which is totally fine. Uh, but yeah, I chose to use that. So military crossbowmen, this adds a bit of variety to the major factions military units. Uh, it essentially gives them range ability because they did not have that before. And in any veteran Kenshi knows, if you just have a whole squad of crossbowmen, you can pretty much roll over any major faction in the game. And this kind of tips things a bit more in their favor. Uh, they're not overpowered or anything, but it does give them range capacity. And I think that is useful for the NPCs. Um, now we have the Holy Chest Plate Blueprint, and this essentially just adds a blueprint that should have been in the base game, in my opinion. Uh, you can't actually craft Holy Chest Plates in the vanilla version of Kinchi, and this gives you access to that blueprint. It was in the base code anyways, it just plopped it right in there, so no-brainer mod for me. Uh, extend Campsite. So this mod in particular is extremely useful if you're looking for a more nomadic uh, play style. Uh, the important thing about this mod is it allows you to build buildings that don't register you for base raids on the map. So I know some people will get a little frustrated if all they do is just plop down a single well and then the nearby major factions know immediately where you are and are sending a 40-man raid to beat your face in, right? So that's always a little frustrating. But this gives you access to, you know, a bit more structure to a camp other than just sleeping bags and a little tiny campfire. And I don't know, it makes sense to me because I, I feel like, you know, if you see other uh, NPC camps on the map where you've got like multiple dust bandits or whatever, and they've got nice, nice little tents and buildings and whatnot, like you should have access to that too, right? So yeah, this is a kind of a no brainer to me. It also has uh, prisoner poles for free, which I find to be really useful. <laughs> All right, moving on, we have the cross pole arm mod. I don't really like the, the large menagerie weapon mods or whatever, but I felt like this adds just a little bit of flavor to the Holy Nation. Um, I use this, it's enjoyable to me. Um, moving on, we have the Hydroponics Plus. Uh, yeah, so cotton and cactuses are not available for the late game hydroponics, which I thought was a little odd. So you are limited in what you can create in the, in the late game. And yeah, this just adds that into the game. I've had no issues with it personally, and it makes sense. So moving on, we have the immersive furniture mod. Um, yeah, this is totally just an aesthetics mod. I really, you know, I'm a Sims player. Okay, you know, I like having my nice little homes and having the clutter and all that kind of stuff. The, the vanilla furniture in this game can be a bit barren, and I think that this mod is really awesome. 
Moving on, we've got the uh, moisture farming mod here. Really useful, as we're going to see that there's a type of play style in this game where if you wanted to just sort of set up shop in an NPC town, and uh, like I think the most effective way to do that is to make stuff like rum and grog, and you're going to need water to do that, which is extremely hard to come by in the actual NPC town. So this essentially fixes that. Now this makes the game easier, obviously, but if you've done that type of playthrough before, you'll notice how frustrating it is. And there really should have been some sort of water mechanic in the first place that's easily accessible in a town other than trying to buy a very limited amount of well water. So I don't know, it, this is just up to you. If you wanna have a more seamless experience, you can have access to that. And also allows you to just sort of build out in the more barren deserts a bit easily. So now we've got the Burned Alive, Burn Your Enemies mod. This essentially just gives you a prisoner pole that will eventually kill your victim. I know it's a bit gruesome, but uh, yeah, it's Kenshi. You should have the access to, you know, deal with your prisoners as you wish. And um, I kind of wish you didn't have to have two building materials to make a single one of these, because every time you delete one, you will lose a building material. Uh, but yeah, I guess it's a small price to pay to be able to kill your victims here. And yeah, it, you don't have to have this if you don't want it, but I often run into the the unfortunate circumstance where a lot of my enemies just go unconscious, and then I'm constantly trying to like raid a base or something, and enemies that I've already defeated just keep getting back up and up and up and up, and it just like it gets frustrating. So now we've got the peeler machine. Um, this is basically just it's already in the base game. I'm not gonna spoil where you get it, but uh, it's useful for not only killing your victims, but uh, peeling all their limbs off so you can give them cybernetic enhancements and all this mod does is just gives you access to the blueprint much much easierly or that's not a word but you get what I mean and uh, yeah pretty self-explanatory now we're gonna go to craftable shackles uh, this doesn't mean you can suddenly have slaves I actually don't use any slave mods um, I just thought it was a little odd that you know you can put people in jail in your base but you can't actually put shackles on them you know, if they try to escape, you know, it, it does have a lot of weight on the shackles, so it's not easy to run away. And yeah, this allows you to craft shackles, and I feel like that should have been the base game as well. And yeah, that's all there is to say about that mod. Um, the Forgotten Ones, Recruitable Skeletons. Uh, yeah, so again, not going to swell where this occurs, but you can run into a large cadre of soldier bot skeletons, and this allows you the ability to recruit them directly into your party. This is a broken mod uh, in the sense that it is overpowered. And yeah, it just it's flavor. And once you know the location of where these guys are, you could, with this mod, just suddenly have 40 soldier bots under your control. Um, it just depends on what type of gameplay that you're looking for. Um, we have a recruitable prisoners mod. I'll actually talk about this a bit more later. All this, this mod particularly does is add more uh, bounties and whatnot that you can actually recruit from because the original mod hasn't been updated yet for a lot of the southeastern uh, portions of the map. Um, minor fesh, or sorry, minor mesh fixes. Uh, this is a no-brainer mod. It sort of just fixed the uh, the model clipping that some of these uh, items or assets in the game have. And again, I've had no issues with this. It's just a quality of life mod. Um, now we got the enhanced shopping economy. This is going back to that sort of bar shop sort of gameplay and an NPC city thing. Uh, this gives everyone basically a universal basic income, which I thought was a little funny. And you may kind of gawk at that given the, uh, the setting of Kenshi, but uh, this just is for gameplay purposes. I've noticed that uh, people tend to run out of money very quickly, and then you're kind of just sitting in your shop with nothing really to do. So this kind of livens it up a bit. Yeah, I, I think it's worthwhile. You know, I know it's a little silly, but uh, it's just a workaround to make that sort of game through our gameplay fun. Now, interior and exterior design, I am subscribed to this, and I have mixed opinions on this because on one hand, it is something that is very, very awesome because it allows you to build a whole lot of stuff that you normally can't. Um, and also the blueprints for these things are kind of hidden throughout the world. So it is seamless and like I barely even realized I had this mod installed, for instance. However, I did run into some crashing issues, specifically with the Emperor statues, believe it or not. And I don't know. I've only had the issues with the, the statues in particular. Everything else seemed to work. Um, but yeah, that's just something to sort of keep in mind. I think it doesn't really go into a full extent of 
what everything that you can get from this mod is in the, the initial workshop here. But um, I think you actually get stuff like faction banners and a lot of different cool things. So um, if you're really interested in sort of detailing your base out a bit more, uh, go ahead and use this. Just be careful with those emperor statues. I don't, I don't know why I had issues with that. So yeah. Uh, also, this is where the concrete walls come from, I'm pretty sure. Some people are asking, where do I get those uh, those those walls that you had and whatnot? And uh, I think this mod is the one that allows you to build them, actually. So, yeah, there you go. Um, the free the hair mod is pretty self-explanatory. You'll notice that there's clipping on certain hats, like the, like the, the cap here. Uh, but it's really awesome for these more, like, uh, oriental-style hats. And... I don't know, it just kind of depends. Like, if you're smart with the way that you set your characters up, you can make this work seamlessly. Um, but I know some people may not care for hair clipping. It just depends on uh, what you're going for. Quiver backpack slot. So this was something that, I don't know, it's a little odd to me because crossbows actually don't shoot long arrows that are kind of depicted in this, uh, this screenshot here. But I think part of it is just the fact that, like, you know... I don't know. I, it makes sense. Like, these should have some level of quiver because I've noticed in my own gameplay that my archers tend to just have their entire inventories filled with arrows, and that's a little obnoxious. But it, it makes sense to have something on your back that you're you're drawing from, right? So this has worked pretty seamlessly for me. It's useful. Pick it up. Um, Reactive World. So this is another big mod, and I use it uh, just because it adds a lot more variety to the actual game world itself. So you may have noticed that you can actually affect the political world of Kenshi by, you know, attacking certain factions and kidnapping their faction leaders. What this does is basically adds a bit more complexity to that. So certain factions can't be destroyed in like, you know, three kidnappings and, and you're done, right? It, it, it gives a bit more complexity to everything and I've really enjoyed this. So I'm not gonna go through every single thing that this mod does in particular, but if you're interested, I'd go ahead and read it, uh, what he's done so far with this mod. It's a work in progress mod, but it is a pretty popular one on the workshop. So definitely take that into consideration. Copper ore drills. Uh, this is something that should have been in the base game in my opinion. You have an iron ore drill, but you don't have a copper one. So you're going to always be using a pickaxe forever, even when you've got like hydroponics, you know, for your farm. So yeah, this just, I don't know. It, it's pretty self-explanatory if you're familiar with what the iron ore drill does in game. Uh, let's talk. Uh, so this is a flavor mod. All it does is it basically allows NPCs to repeat their conversations, which you may think, oh, that's, that'd be kind of annoying. But really the reason why I have this is because uh, sometimes you'll miss really cool and awesome companion conversations and they will only say them once in the vanilla version of the game. So yeah, you may just completely miss out on a pretty awesome conversation if you don't have that mod. So now we got the 256 recruitment limit. Uh, I don't think anyone will ever have 256 people in their game at any seven or any given time, but this definitely uh, I think is a useful mod just to have that, you know, just to have the ability to go past the initial 30 uh, person limit. So yeah, it also increases the squad limit, and I think that's useful too. Um, so recruitable prisoners, this is a hugely popular mod on here, and it allows you to recruit the prisoners that you take. And what I like about this mod is you'd think it'd be broken, but uh, the chances of people joining you are very, very slim actually. I've had it only happen maybe like 10 times in total. I mean, granted, I'm not like actively trying to recruit prisoners all the time, but um, it factors in things like, I believe, like your strength and whatnot compared to the prisoners that you're talking to. So it's not like you can just beat up a really strong prisoner and then, you know, add them to your army and just have an awesome prisoner army. Like, you actually have to kind of be on their level for them to take you seriously, at least from last I read about this mod. And yeah, I mean, it's just useful to have another option. Personally, I like it. You know, I think, you know, Hungry Bandit, you know, if you if he gets caught by a, you know, a city that has the capacity to grow all its own food and you're willing to recruit him, like, he should want to join you, right? So, yeah, that mod's pretty cool. Legendary Weapons. Uh, I was thinking about maybe unsubscribing from this, uh, but it definitely adds some really cool items into the game. 
once you kind of figure out how to obtain them, you realize like, oh, I have found this vault. I will now get a super amazing overpowered item. Yeah, and that's something where, to me, I don't know, it just adds a little something to the exploration. The weapons definitely look cool, don't get me wrong. Um, but I noticed that once I had like three or four of these, like these things hit like a truck and all you have to do is just find them. There's no like major awesome boss or something guarding it or whatever, but it's just there for flavor. And um, yeah, I have it installed currently. Moving on here, we've got the crucifixion mod. This just basically is another prisoner cage and it's there for aesthetic. You know, if you want to do a really cruel bandit run, you can have these crucifixes. Yeah, I've shown them off in my my previous videos and uh yeah they work pretty seamlessly weight bench and wooden dexterity we're going to talk about these both kind of simultaneously so both of these you may have seen them before uh these are essentially what a lot of people consider quote cheat mods and i don't really agree with that uh if we talk about how things are done in the base version of kenshi you're going to have three base stats that's strength dexterity and toughness um, these all affect your combat stats. So, you know, you're going to need a high strength not only to just carry a bunch of junk, but to use heavy armor. Uh, it also affects the damage from stuff like martial arts. And the way you train it in vanilla is simply by f overloading your backpack with a bunch of like heavy stuff like iron ore and then running around constantly. And to me, that, you know, it works when you have a small group of like five or six people. But uh, if you're someone like me and you enjoy playing with, you know, larger squad sizes and all this other kind of stuff, uh, you're going to have tons and tons of more people to be micromanaging. And I just don't have the patience for that in a game that is already pretty lengthy, all things considered. Um, so, yeah, this is just a, a workaround. The same thing applies to dexterity. I believe in game the limits on these are like 59 for strength and 29 for dexterity. You probably won't get anywhere near 59 because just the way it works uh, in, in game. But you'll get close to around like 40, 50 strength pretty easily and about 20-ish dexterity for your characters if you decide to use both of these things, the dexterity uh, dummy and the, uh, the weight bench. So more names. Uh, this just adds a bit more NPC names that you can run into. I feel like the vanilla list is a bit uh, limited. Uh, so yeah, this is... This is just another flavor mod, works fine for me. Faces plus, so what this does is it adds a bit more texture to your characters in game. Um, I've used this pretty seamlessly. I like that you can have face paint and stuff like that. It adds it for you know your Shek, your Hivers, etc. And yeah, it gives a bit more uh, variety to even to the, the skeletons. And you can have cannibals and whatnot. I've never used the cannibals, but yeah. Just more options. I don't think there's anything wrong with having more options. Moving on, we've got four more. We've got the skeleton frame cover. This is something that's going to make your game a bit more easier, especially if you use skeletons. You may have noticed that you only have access to two armor slots in your skeletons, and what this does is essentially gives them a full body heavy armor suit, which makes them much more competitive, especially in the late game uh, for uh, Kenshi veterans, you may have noticed that Shek are obviously like the best min-max race if you're into min-maxing and all that kind of stuff. A big reason for that is because skeletons actually just don't have the ability to armor up their head or um, their legs very effectively. So yeah, this essentially uh, curbs that weakness and gives skeletons an option. Um, I've noticed that other skeletons don't really use this in the game, so only your characters will have access to this. And it just, I don't know. I use it just because I like having my skeletons be a significant threat. You don't get access to many skeletons, so I feel like they should be pretty powerful when you do get them. And yeah, so there's that mod. Moving on, uh, we've got the throne. Uh, I like this mod because it gives you a throne. What I don't like about this mod is you actually get two different things. You get the platform that the throne goes on, and you get the throne, those are the two things. However, you can't put the throne on the throne platform, which kind of sucks, uh, but you do just get access to the regular throne and I've used this in, in my game and I feel like you should have access to that, why not? Uh, now we've got the arc hair and beards. This is actually outdated because this is, I believe, baseline vanilla now, uh, but yeah, it just gives you access to a whole ton of new hairstyles and beards and whatnot and, you know, again, more variety. And I have colored clothes, but this is, yeah, this is a obsolete mod. I need to actually unsubscribe from that. So, 
yeah, this has been my mod video, and I hope that this has essentially given you some insight on to some of the more popular mods on the workshop. Some of these are not so popular, but I've found them really useful. And yeah, definitely add mods to your games, guys. Like this is basically like free expansion pack tier stuff. And since the major developer behind Kenshi won't be doing any more content updates, this is essentially what you're going to be having to affect your game from years to come. So hope this video is helpful and I'll catch you in the next one.